So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you the terrain visualization, navigation and uh, the RAS mapper interface in HECRAS uh, 2D for flood modeling. So now let's get started. So in our previous video, I have shown you how to add uh, a DTM data into uh, a RAS mapper in HECRAS 2D. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic uh, options that is available in the RAS mapper and the terrain visualization and navigation. So let me show you the options that are available in the RAS mapper interface. So starting with this is the first option uh, called as a select feature. So you can select feature using this particular option here and you can select any of your uh, the point line or polygon feature and followed by the second uh, tool is our pan tool. So using this pan tool you can pan around your uh, data set here so you can able to see. So we can pan around the data using the left key. You have to hold your uh, left key and you have to pan around your uh, data set here. So you can able to see and followed by the next option is the reset view to the full extent. So let me show you that. I'm going to click this option. So now this is the reset uh, view to the full extent uh, of this data. So uh, next option is to uh, zoom uh, to select the region to zoom. So we're going to use this option called select region to zoom into. So I'm going to click this option and I'm uh, going to uh, select this particular area and it's going to zoom in. So uh, and the next set of uh, tool is the zoom in to a half the current extent so it's going to zoom in uh, into your uh, data set and similarly to zoom out so it's going to we're going to click this option called zoom out to the double current extent and the next option is the zoom to the previous extent so uh, let me click this so it's going to zoom to the previous extent and similarly zoom to the next extent so it's going to zoom to the next extent. Similarly, we have the la this tool called the measure uh, tool. So this particular tool is very useful in case of, uh, to measure distance. So now let us take a look at our DTM data here. So I can able to see this is our DTM data and I can able to see this is our channel here. Let me use my pan tool. And here I can able to see this is our channel. So I can able to see this is our channel. So you can clearly able to see the channel here. And uh, these are the overbank over uh, floodplain areas here. So you can able to see these are the overbank uh, floodplain areas. And uh, we can uh, adjust the how the terrain appears using this uh, pan tool here. So I'm going to click the pan tool and I'm going to navigate over this uh, terrain here. So you can able to see the elevation difference uh, in this uh, the pan tool. Uh, you can able to see the cursor here. So you can able to see the elevation difference here. Similarly, I'm going to show you another uh, part of the study area. So you can able to see the elevation here starting from here it is around 200 and uh, I'm going to move my uh, pan uh, this cursor downwards. You can able to see the decrease in elevation. And uh, here you can able to see in this option called terrains here. So when the list of files here, so you can able to see this particular layer called terrain DTM uh, 20 feet is highlighted in uh, the in a pink color and uh, it is important to notice that any set of data that you are working uh, on the data that uh, that can actually be accessed and manipulated so it will be highlighted in this uh, pink color so you can able to see the terrain dtm 20 feet compared to the our previous layer that is terrain and now let us take a look at the different options that is available here so in the terrain dtm uh, 20 feet uh, here so we're going to navigate to this layer i'm going to right click and uh, we have this different options that is available starting from the image display properties to uh, view terrain in 3d so these are the different options that are available so now uh, let us take a look at this uh, particular option called image uh, display properties so we're going to click this option so now a new window pop up saying terrain dtm uh, that is layer properties so uh, in this window we have two different options here starting with the visualization and information and the next set of option is a source file so now let me click this option called visualization and information. So in the visualization information first we have this uh, option called vector and followed by we have this uh, second option is called surface. So currently it is marked as a plot surface. So here the color scheme which indicates the different uh, elevation values here so you can able to see. So uh, each of this color which indicates the different level of elevations here so uh, you can able to kind of see from this option here uh, the plot surface option. And the next set of options uh, that is available in this uh, window that is layer property is the opacity. 
So you can able to adjust, uh, you can able to see this option called opacity. So you can able to adjust the transparency of this particular uh, data set here. For example, let me uh, reduce the transparency. So this particular option is very useful uh, in case uh, this layer beneath, uh, in order to visualize the data set uh, beneath this layer. So the opacity option is very useful. So you can adjust the transparency here. So you can able to see. And followed by the third option here. So that is contour and hill shade here. So we have this option called the plot contour at an interval of uh, phi and plot hill shade. By the default, it is select, uh, selected the Z factor as three. And the, pl the plot contour, uh, let me select this particular option called plot uh, contour. So once we have clicked this option here, so you can automatically you can able to see the contours has appeared on our DTM here. So you can able to see that. Let me turn this off and the contour disappeared. So I'm going to click this. So the contour is back here. So you can able to see the contour. So let me zoom in here so you can able to visualize the contour here. And also you can adjust the contour values here. For example, I'm going to make it as a 10, uh, 10 interval. So we can able to see the changes in the value. Similarly, I'm going to increase up to 20. So you can able to see the contour only appears towards the high, the higher elevation areas. So let me reduce the contour to, to the def or default value for phi here. And I uh, can able to see the, uh, the channels here. So I can ab clearly able to view the channels now. And similarly, we have the Z factor. So I can adjust this uh, Z factor. So that is the vertical displacement factor to the to the change uh, view of the landscape to make it uh, stand out more clearly. So you can uh, adjust the Z factor and towards the right side, right hand side here. So you can able to see the additional options here. So we have this additional set of options starting with the plot a contour at the cursor and plot a raster file uh, outlines, plot a raster file names plot the tile outlines, plot cell outlines, plot cell values, plot uh, the tin edges and plot uh, the zero, uh, zero level uh, stitch tin edges and last is a remove stitch rendering. So for example, uh, you can uh, plot, uh, you can plot a raster file outlines and uh, you can plot a raster file names and plot a tile outlines. So let me show you the first option here, plot a contour at a cursor. So you can able to see here. I'm going to place my cursor here. So it's going to plot a contour over those areas. So you can able to see that. And the uh, next is a plot a raster file out uh, outlines. Uh, and the next option is a plot a raster file uh, names. And the next option is a plot a tile outlines. So it's automatically plotted uh, tiles here. So you can able see here. So these are the options uh, that is available here. So I can able to see these options. So let me uh, turn off these options here. And uh, let me adjust the opacity back to 100 percentage. So once we apply this layer properties, uh, so we're going to close this window by using this option here. So we're going to close this option. And here you can able to see once we, uh, we have uh, seen the image, uh, the layer properties uh, here. So we have uh, selected the contour options here. So you can now see because I have uh, I asked it to create a con uh, the contours. Uh, those contours are actually be created here in our uh, model uh, that may help with uh, visualization. And uh, here in the layer, you can able to see this particular contour is 5 meter contour. So suppose if you want to actually remove this contour, again, I'm going to navigate to this layer and I'm going to right click on this and select the option called image display properties. And in that, I'm going to navigate this option called uh, contour and hill shade. So you can turn off the contours uh, using by deselecting this option called plot contours. So I have clicked that. And uh, next is uh, we have the second option called source files. So actually I can able to see the source files here. So uh, the terrain, uh, we have terrain.vrt that is terrain DTM 20 feet.vrt and uh, below we have the original terrain uh, data set that is uh, terrain DTM 20 feet uh, DTM 20 feet uh, dot tiff. So you can able to see. So basically this gives us an information about the minimum elevation, the maximum elevation, 
the mean elevation, standard deviation, cell size and the rounding and last the info and folder. So we have some uh, useful information here. So starting with the minimum, uh, maximum and mean elevation, standard deviation and cell size and rounding and etc. So let me close this window. So now uh, we have, uh, this is our, uh, our base model uh, that we're going to work from uh, now onwards. So uh, here you can see the river channels here. So this is the river channels and uh, we're going to move here towards uh, here. So you can able to see this particular, uh, this particular line across the channel here. So that is actually which represents the bridge here. So it is actually the bridges uh, from the Turin model. So basically the Turin model uh, has got everything that was visible in the in that study region uh, in the past. So it, uh, it picked it up so that this particular bridge. So uh, we need to build up a model uh, before that we need to get uh, get uh, the get rid of this uh, bridges here. So uh, in this video I have shown you the Turin visualization navigation and basic uh, tools in the RAS mapper in Hikras 2D for flood modeling. So thanks for watching and uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and give us a like.